From Tricones.com, I'm Jason Kitamura, and this is Tech in Cannabis. I talk with game changers in the tech community to gain valuable insights into the future of the fast-paced cannabis industry. Today, we are joined by James E., founder and CEO of Leaf Trade, a B2B SaaS platform for wholesale cannabis buyers and sellers. We talk about how James piggyback off another successful software product he co-founded in the restaurant industry and use laser-like focus to find the best ways to help cannabis wholesalers save time and make their processes exponentially more efficient. We talk about his go-to market strategy and the sequence of events that enabled Leaf Trade to find massive success. Hi, and today we have James E. with Leaf Trade. Uh, thanks for coming on to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Great to connect, Jason. All right. So I guess for all the listeners that don't know what Leaf Trade is, uh, I mean, in a nutshell, um, you'll do a better job explaining it than myself, but it's it's essentially a, a marketplace for wholesale, correct? It's also kind of a back end tool that wholesalers and growers could kind of use to manage your inventory and and fulfill orders. Is that correct? Th that's right. That's right. So I think uh, the simplest way to put it is if you are a licensed retail cannabis uh, dispensary, and you're looking to stock your shelves up with products, then you're going on the leaf trade to find all of the compliant uh, suppliers and brands in your uh, respective market. And you're streamlining and centralizing all of your shopping in one place. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I also was kind of just looking into the platform and, um, you know, a lot of the problems I see um, out there, your, your software kind of, uh, fulfills a lot of different needs. So like, mm -hmm. uh, like inventory control and mm -hmm. also, uh, you know, trying to figure out like, um, like correspondence and things like that. So I guess expand on, you know, how, how you discovered the problem and what you guys are doing to solve it. Yeah, sure. So, um, I guess my journey really kind of began, um, in the early days of when Illinois launched, uh, the cannabis program here. Um, I'd say around 2014, 2015, it's um, widely considered to be the very first of these highly regulated uh, newly emerging markets to launch, uh, which is really to say that it's very differentiated from, say, the Californias and Colorados, right, that most people are familiar with when they think of, think of uh, marijuana, right, um, the established recreational markets out west. And when Illinois launched, um, you know, I was running my previous software company and happened to know a couple of people that had one licenses to operate here. Um, and they were really looking for um, tools to streamline their, their operations, technology platforms to really, um, you know, help get, get them set up. And, um, you know, I was approached, was happy to get involved, I was super intrigued. And I think what we quickly realized was that the specific tech tools that they were looking for just didn't exist at the time, right? It was very early, you know, that's probably what, six, seven years ago. Um, there were some retail um, POS systems that, that were around, uh, right? But um, for the most part, you know, some of the bigger players out there in the technology space either didn't really know how to navigate the space or were specifically, you know, kind of hands off because of the, uh, you know, status of legal legality on a federal level. Um, and so, you know, I was, I kind of stuck around and for the next few months just um, soaked up everything there was to know about the industry, um, all of the regulations, um, identifying the really big problems. And the, the biggest problem that I was able to identify was the way in which these retail dispensaries were ordering from their wholesale suppliers. And they were just doing it sort of, I guess, old fashioned, drug dealer style, right? Text messages and uh, emails <laughs> right. and phone calls. And it was a really super fragmented way of doing business, right? Um, you know, God forbid something happened with the order, right? Something went wrong. Um, now you're digging, trying to dig through a paper trail of, of what, what went wrong and trying to reconcile things and um, a single, trying to organize a single delivery to, to arrive at your dispensary often took, you know, 10, 14, plus days, right? And so um, both parties were spending most of their time, at least half of their time, uh, just managing these orders, right? When th what they really wanted to do was spend their time elsewhere in the business to, to, to grow it and, and scale it, right? Right. Um, and so that's really uh, kind of the story of how, you know, we, we, we um, identified this problem and, and got our foot in the door. 
Gotcha. Yeah, I guess most companies, I guess, you know, at that time, if they're if they're even using like Google Sheets or something, they're like ahead of the curve. <laughs> so <laughs> that's exactly um, right. I, I I always say that the most sophisticated uh, sort of process that we saw uh, were spreadsheets, right? And which right. I think <laughs> is, you know, I think it was really about competition amongst suppliers, like who's got the better spreadsheet game, <laughs> who does a better job of color coding and putting in formulas <laughs> and stuff like that. But at the end right. of the day, um, when you're sending out spreadsheets to different um, buyers, um, it's not always reconciling the, the available for sale inventory correctly. So by the time somebody puts in an order um, and now another put, person also puts in an order and you're like, ah, shucks, like we already sold that. Um, if you've got this central system, that's kind of the source of truth for your available for sale inventory. You know, some gets uh, ordered and then deducted from uh, the inventory levels. Then it's just kind of like an automated uh, reconciliation system. Wow. Um, that, that's interesting. I mean, I guess backtracking a little bit. So I mean, before you got into this, you uh, co-founded another uh, software, uh, NextMe, right? Uh, which yeah. is in the, the kind of the restaurant game. Um, I guess, how did, how did that transi- transition work? I know you saw some, um, you know, some opportunity, but I mean, was there any like difficulties getting into cannabis? Like what, what made you kind of venture into cannabis? Cause it is kind of a jump for a lot of people who come from, you know, mainstream into, into the business. Yeah, no, I think that's where kind of, uh, one, yeah, you're exactly right. It wasn't, it wasn't an easy decision. Um, I think there was a lot of, uh, you know, my co-founder, um, and brother, right. John, uh, at, mm-hmm. at next me, um, you know, when this cannabis opportunity kind of presented itself, um, you know, I wasn't really kind of, um, you know, going around looking for the opportunities in cannabis, trying to see how I can skin this cat, um, you know, trying to foresee if it was like, you know, an upcoming uh, new multi-million billion dollar industry. Um, it just happened to be um, something that launched in Illinois. And then I happened to know a few people that had gotten into the industry. And so it was really, I think, a series of uh, fortunate events um, and kind of organically, um, saw really big problems. Um, and you know, I'm just kind of the type of person that gets really intrigued by these complex problems. And, um, once I was able to get into it and, and kind of learn about the industry and the players and, um, all the nuances, um, uh, of the regulations and how complex they were and how, um, tricky they were to kind of navigate around, um, that's when I knew that, you know, it was probably an opportunity that I couldn't pass up and had a pretty long conversation with my brother and well, what I thought would be a long conversation. He was just like, not nah, dude, we got, you got to do this. <laughs> you got to do this. We've, we've built the business. You know, we had built the business, um, our previous business to a point, uh, where, you know, he was very easily able to, um, you know, take the reins and, and scale. Um, himself. And so uh, uh, it worked out really nicely. That's awesome. Yeah. And and I think Uh, the other, the other benefit was that, um, you know, I I had already built a a technology team with that company. And so when uh, the opportunity with, with leaf trade came, came along, uh, you know, was able to, you know, talk to a couple of uh, folks on the technology team and say, Hey, do you want to kind of get, be a part of this? And, uh, build out an MVP and and test it on the market and um, it was a sort of a very smooth process. Yeah, I mean that's that's always a lot of the the big uh, uh, hurdle is to finding the right developers that could get the job mm-hmm. done and things like that. So you had you had a lot yeah. of the hard part already taken care of. Yeah, you just needed the <laughs> idea. Well, I yeah. mean, the, also the hard part is like you're saying, there's so much regulation, you know, like metric and all that stuff. I mean, I guess. Mm-hmm how difficult was it to make sure that you're compliant in all the markets that you're trying to attack? Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's really the, um, crux of it all. Right. I think that if it was like a super regulated market, but there was some sort of uniformity across all States, um, that's one thing, but this is like completely other end of the spectrum where not only is it super, super regulated, but, um, uh, those regulations from state to state are highly nuanced as well, um, and they're different. And so, 
um, I think it really helps that, um, you know, some of our early clients, I'd say, you know, four or five of them that started here in Illinois and are headquartered here um, have gone on to, um, you know, become, you know, some of the largest enterprise level multi-state operating uh, businesses in, in the cannabis industry. And, you know, by their by their very nature, they operate in all these states, uh, multiple states, often, you know, eight, nine, 10, 12, you know, plus states. Um, and so having these anchor clients like that who are uh, very well versed um, and know the differences in regulations from state to state, like the back of their hand, uh, really helped to kind of develop those insights. And as we were building out the MVP, um, you know, I was able to go to my clients and say, like, hey, like, how do you think this will work in the state of Illinois and like other states? And, uh, you know, we were able to get valuable feedback, like, hey, listen, like, this is really awesome um, in this state, but if you do a little tweak like this, you'll be able to capture most use cases across these multiple states. Um, and not only that, uh, they kind of gave further insights into how regulations might evolve um, over time as well. So, hey, that if you do it like this, then um, it might work really well in the short term, but if you do a little tweak, it'll work well in the short term, medium term, long term, right? Wow, uh, that, I mean, that's really good. Uh, the way you built it is a really good way to do it. I mean, a lot of companies kind of just build something with the hope that it's going to work for their clients. But it's, yeah. it sounded like you almost like went hand in hand working with your clients to actually build the product. So yeah, like I mean, real like world application. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, I think the, it, it's, this is such an, a unique kind of juncture in history, right? Where you don't really see too many brand new kind of industries just pop up like out of nowhere. Right. Um, and so, you know, I've, I've seen other industries that try to, or sorry, other um, technology companies that maybe try to disrupt industries, right? There's a lot of inefficiencies mm -hmm. in this hundred year old um, industry, like how do we change it, right? But I think right. the juncture at, we're at today with cannabis is like, how can we help uh, these new market participants, uh, the cannabis companies uh, really define how, um, the, the processes that will um, help run their business for the years to come, right? So, yeah, I can imagine for a lot of these companies who are doing things the right way, um, uh, a lot of them because of, you know, like legalization and, and people adopting to cannabis more that they're growing at a rate that, you know, companies aren't just used to just growing like this. So, you know, pen and paper yeah. and spreadsheets will only work so far. But once you get to a certain level, you're kind of like, oh, sh you know, we're, we're going to dedicate <laughs> yeah. half our man hours just yeah. to try to calculate st stuff like this. So I yeah. guess in a way, you're just a platform that allows people to scale, essentially. Absolutely. Right. I think that, you know, the, you know, those spreadsheet processes really work if you're you've got dozen, maybe dozens of orders per month. But once you get into the hundreds and thousands, then it's uh, it becomes very, very difficult to manage. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, another another thing was interesting that I, I heard is that you guys you guys went for the smaller markets first. So I know you guys are in Chicago, so you kind of tack, mm -hmm. tackle that. But I yeah, yeah, every other company that you know I'm dealing with and talking with, a lot of them obviously they go for the California, the Colorado, yeah. right? We're in California, so obviously everybody over here yeah. is trying to attack the big market, <laughs> right? But you guys kind of right. went the opposite, trying to get the smaller, um, which I think is a smart move. But how, how do you, I mean, in hindsight, how do you think that, that played out? Yeah, I think, again, I kind of fall back to um, just sort of being at the right place at the right time, um, um, kind of following my gut instinct um, with the, you know, series of events that kind of, happened starting here in Illinois. Uh, but at, at, at a certain point, it really did um, need to be sort of a, a philosophical question internally in the company as to whether, um, you know, in terms of uh, uh, market strategy, right? It's like, um, should we actively go out, um, even though we started here in Illinois, should we actively go out there and service these established recreational markets out west like Colorado and California, or should we um, stay highly focused? Um, and we, we chose the latter route. 
Um, and I think that, you know, like you said, I think most people in um, the cannabis technology arena, um, you know, when it's like, when it comes down to, hey, where's the opportunity at? Um, most of the time it's like, hey, the, the gold rush or, or the green rush um, is happening out west. Let's go out there, right? And 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 that's, uh, I think, a natural thought process, right? If you're talking in terms of total addressable market and stuff like that, then mm -hmm. um, I think that is the way to go. But I think very early on, I, I think that um, you really couldn't see how this market was going to evolve unless you were here, like in Chicago, um, around 2015, 2016, 2017, um, to really kind of get that head start and knowing that, hey, all of these states that are going to launch um, going forward um, are going to be these highly regulated states that are likely going to model their programs um, off of how Illinois uh, started their program. Um, and so we really optimize our product um, for these markets and mm. um, and uh, decided to you know stay really hyper focused. And so I think that um, now I, I, as a result, we're the leading platform of this kind in what I consider the highly regulated newly emerging markets, primarily east of Colorado. Um, and very recently, we've been ramping up very quickly into uh, select Western states like Arizona, Nevada, um, and Colorado, or sorry, California, uh, where a lot of our MSO partners are um, launching into. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, it seems that, yeah, I guess if you were uh, trying to focus on the big markets like California, you would put all your eggs in that one basket, try to perfect the system for California. But as you said, yeah. Every state has its own little nuances and different, you know, differences and how things are regulated that it's almost like they, they, they are such a small part of their own market share that they probably wouldn't put the attention that's actually needed into those smaller states. But you guys, so, you, so essentially what you guys did was focus on the smaller guys. And now you're like the dominant, like understanding of the, the whole system for these smaller guys that yeah. basically, <laughs> well, if, I mean, they, I if guess they focus it's... all the time in California, they're behind in your guys. Yeah, story. yeah. Well, yeah. It's, a, it's a little bit of a shift in perspective, I think. I think that yeah. it's, we focus on what were um, smaller markets, mm -hmm. uh, but the yeah. client base themselves um, ended up being not so small. Right. right, they right, right, uh, exactly. they ended up be becoming yeah. the you know often publicly traded companies that um, operate in many many states, um, and so I think that um, it it was it it was a calculated risky but calculated bet I think to um, limit our you know quote unquote limit ourselves, but really you know in my perspective it was just hyper focused um, in these uh, newly emerging markets. Um, yeah. But I think that um, as these MSOs start to develop and grow and then launch into other states um, and then now, um, you know, taking over market share in, in the Western states, um, I think it was a good strategic move in terms of um, kind of riding that, that network effect. Um, no, gotcha. You don't, you yeah. don't have to, you don't have to find clients in California. You're just using your existing clients and they're expanding to California. So you're just taking you taking you guys with them. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that's part of it. But I think that from a product yeah. perspective as well, um, uh, we, the, the added benefit of our product is that we focused on a lot of the, the sort of back end fulfillment mm -hmm. um, processes. Um, and so I think that that's really, as we are launching into these markets in Arizona, Nevada, and California, um, the, sort of local clients there are finding a lot of value um, with those tools. Now, I, I also saw, um, I, you know, I'm not sure you guys have something that's called uh, Leaf Pay, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, that's the payment part is obviously a big headache for a lot of these, uh, these customers. Um, th th was that something that was launched um, pretty quickly after you did your initial Leaf trade? Or is that something that was added on later? Yeah, so um, it was actually, I'd say, the the last part of our um, technology stack. Okay. Um, 
and everything for the most part that we develop is really um, as, as a result of, uh, you know, listening to our clients and, and the demand from our clients, right? And so, um, you know, when our clients start coming to us and saying, hey, listen, we love Leaf Trade for how it helps us to streamline all of our sales processes. And then the next step is um, packaging and fulfillment, right? And then the next step is for their um, accounting and finance department to kind of like reconcile these orders and, um, you know, gather that data for their source of truth in terms of wholesale sales transactions. Um, you know, the sort of next frontier from them, um, you know, the, the, the ask from them was, hey, listen, like we, we love how you streamline all this. Like how can you help us to kind of close the loop um, on the last piece of fulfillment, which is payment, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that um, this kind of goes hand in hand with, with our, our go-to market strategy in focusing in the highly regulated markets. Um, in the markets that we serve or started um, servicing, the highly regulated states, because the regulatory foundations were um, so strong, uh, all of our clients are banked, like legally, very transparently, um, it's not Chase or, or, you know, Bank of America, but it's, you know, local state chartered um, banks and, and uh, credit unions. And um, they're servicing our clients in a very transparent way and, and getting audited by, you know, all of the regulatory bodies um, in, within their regions. And, um, you know, all of our clients have business bank accounts. Um, and so the way that they were paying each other was really just, hey, when the the due date came for for payment on an order the seller which is just dialing for dollars like hey can you please right. write us a check can you please write us a check can you please fedex it over um yeah. and you know you may have typical term periods that are you know it, it varies right but may, maybe it's you know 14 days or 30 days or something and a lot of times those payments will come in like 30 or 60 or 90 plus days afterwards mm -hmm. right and it's not i don't think it's necessarily because they're purposely trying to be bad payers. Um, they just don't have the tools that are normally available to um, businesses in other industries, right? To, to kind of right. set up these these uh, convenience um, payment tools and, and automated processes. And so that's really when we um, took their existent, existing um, payment uh, flows and digitized it right inside of the point of transaction, which is our platform. Um, and so, you know, they can really save all their payment information, save all the business terms, right? The term periods. Um, and then as soon as, a, you know, a, a, as an order is um, reconciled and completed, the payments will just automatically flow through from the buyer to the seller. That, that's awesome. Um, how, how difficult would you say it was to get a, a payment you know, part of your, your SaaS platform in cannabis. I mean, it was, I'm, I'm assuming it wasn't the easiest thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it, it, it's very, you know, nothing in cannabis is easy. Like I said, yeah. I always say, right. Um, but, um, you know, especially with payments, um, you want to make sure that you're, you know, double, triple, um, checking on your compliance. Right. Um, and two, uh, payments is really, um, you know, once you get into the realm of payments, you're, you have a responsibility for people's money, <laughs> right? right? And I always right, tell my yeah. team, like, hey, like, whatever we do, you can't mess with people's money, even down to the penny, right? And so you have to make sure that you build a platform that, you know, um, will get everything, um, you know, down to the penny correct. You know, you're you got to be able to generate correct invoices that reflect exactly what the buyer is receiving and paying, you know, for um, all of the itemized, um, you know, discounts and um, you know any type of fees um, or or whatever, right? Needs to be able to be uh, get reflected, right? And so, um, you know, we needed to to build all those tools uh, before we actually um, address the payment part. Got it. Um, 
I mean, you know, your, your system does a lot. It sounds like it, it's like essentially you just kind of talk to your clients and say like, hey, any problem you have, I'm going to solve it with our, <laughs> the software, so essentially. I mean, I don't know if you have like a number, but did you kind of figure, like, did you guys kind of figure out how much time you're actually saving some of these companies by using the platform? Do you have some yeah, sort I mean, of metric? So typically the way that we think about it is like um, the organizations that are using us typically are like the sales team. Um, on the supplier side, right? Um, hmm. The operational, you know, packaging fulfillment team, um, and then the accounting finance teams. And typically each department, we're saving anywhere between 20 to 40 hours a week. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a and, whole and, and person, counting, basically. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, because, you know, before they use the system like this, um, it, it, it was really difficult to kind of have kind of a source of truth in terms of, uh, you know, transactional information um, down to, you know, every SKU and every unit and how much and what the discounting was and all that stuff. Um, and so to kind of, um, especially with, with auditing, um, you know, mm -hmm. this industry is heavily audited. There are regular auditing processes that they have to adhere to, um, to kind of have to gather that information piecemeal from, from different things is just a, a huge headache um, and a time consuming process for them. Um, and we really um, help these organizations to, um, to really wrangle that and, and um, uh, eliminate all the piecing together. Well, um, I could see it being very, very uh, beneficial to some of these companies. Um, I mean, wh who would you say would be like your perfect client? Like, uh, it's I know you guys uh, cater to mostly the you know the the distributors and the you know the people who are producing the product, but also there's you know a marketplace that the the actual buyers are going to to find all these products as well. But who who would you say is like you know going to get the most benefit from your platform? Um, so I would say really anybody that, um, if you're looking at the cannabis supply chain, like if you've got, you know, available for sale products, um, anywhere on the B2B side, right. Whether you're a cultivator, just growing flower, bulk trim, all the way down to a dispensary level. Um, that's really our sweet spot. Right. And so the, one of the other things that we, um, I think find ourselves in a unique position is, um, our technology is able to support what we call V to V, um, transactions. So it's not just like packaged, um, you know, brand goods that go directly to the dispensary. Um, it's everything else upstream. So if you're mm -hmm. a cultivator and you've got flour or bulk trim and you needed to, you need to sell it down to the next step, um, All right. uh, to say a processor who turns that into oils and, and, you know, other manufactured goods, um, you can do that. And then that, you know, point at that point when they want to sell downstream, uh, to maybe a brand or, you know, packagers, right. Um, you can do that. And then the next step to distributors, it's at, and then down to the, to the retail location, right? So at every step of the, of the way in the, in, the, in the supply chain for B2B, uh, we're able to support that. Gotcha. And uh, what, what's the best way that somebody could get started working with you guys? I'd say, uh, you know, go, go to our website, uh, leaf.trade. Uh, you'll be able to find links to, um, you know, sign up. Uh, and, you know, somebody on our sales and customer success team will get back to you uh, very quickly. Uh, you can also email sales at leaftrade.com. Um, and, uh, yeah. All right. Um, what's, what's, uh, what's in store for the future for, with you guys? Any, any big plans? What's the next step for, for Leaf Trade? Yeah. Um, yeah. So we actually, um, we, we closed our recent round in, in March or series a. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, our goal with that funding is really to quickly expand into, uh, some of these more recreational, um, markets out West, um, that I mentioned earlier, like, uh, yeah. Nevada, Arizona, California, Michigan as well is, although it's in the Midwest, um, is sort of the state that kind of had, um, uh, established recreational dynamics. Um, so we're expanding, uh, very quickly into those states and then, um, expanding our technology team as well. Um, 
And so, uh, yeah. Gotcha. Um, it, I know it takes a lot of manpower to expand. Um, on the on the technology side, um, mm -hmm. is there any uh, new advancements that you guys kind of have planned in the future? That's uh, kind of game changers for you guys. Yeah. So we are. You know, we mentioned the payments piece. Um, we mm -hmm. also have uh, business intelligence um, uh, part of our business as well that we're continuing to exp expand. Um, and then uh, we are um, uh, we are building more tools um, for the retailer side as well. So we've got a lot of robust integrations on on the supplier side, um, and those very same tools or similar tools um, that are very valuable for the the retailer side as well, like integrations into the POS systems, gotcha. um, into uh, um, online ordering platforms on the B2C side um, that will further, uh, you know, reduce the amount of hours that our users are, are spending. Gotcha. Now, uh, the business intelligence you're talking about, uh, I'm assuming you guys are gathering a lot of crucial data uh, with uh, everything that's going in. Is it is it essentially some sort of like a machine learning type, you know, out of the data to kind of give insights? Is that kind of what the, that plan is? Yeah, actually, yeah. So we're already starting to get into that, right? Um, I think any you know really good established e-commerce marketplace platform has um, you know utilizes AI like um, uh, recommendations engines, right? Um, right? And so that's a really big part of our business that we're um, just now starting to get into on the storefront. Um, so um, the ability to really learn um, your buying behavior and the things that um, you know, sell very well um, in your area or your particular store, um, we'll be able to help you kind of connect with similar products and stuff like that, um, especially as the market grows and new market participants come in and, and, and new suppliers are um, entering the market. Um, I think that it becomes more and more difficult to find and, and match with, with, with those best uh, products um, that you're looking for. Um, and so I think AI is, is critical and, and that's something that we're, we're getting into right now. That's great. All right. I mean, oh, well, before we go, um, I know, you know, there's a lot of changes and things that are going on in, in the industry and uh, regulation and legality. Just in, I guess, in your perspective, what do you think is uh, the next step as a country for cannabis? Like, what do you see happening to cannabis? You've seen it. You know, how, how much growth do you see? Like, what do you see for the next, you know, 12 months, would you say? Um, well, I think the, the, the tricky part about it, this industry is that it's, it's really hard to predict what's going to yeah. happen next, right? <laughs> and, and at the same time, things do move really quickly. So, you know, ultimately, I'm, I'm very optimistic and, and, and positive about all this. Um, you know, from like a, a regulatory perspective, I'm not exactly sure you know, we're going to be at, you know, full federal level legality, you know, within the next 12 right. months. But I am optimistic that I think some sort of, you know, bipartisan uh, practical things will be passed, right? Like uh, the Safe Banking Act. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think that, you know, when uh, the government is, for example, you know, trying to collect tax revenue from this, um, they're already seeing issues, you know, attempting to collect bags of cash and stuff like that. Right. And so, <laughs> right, um, right. I think that that's, that's a problem. That's, you know, it, it's just a practical thing. That's, um, um, that I see getting solved, uh, within the next 12 months. Um, you know, which means that, you know, uh, players in the industry will have easier access to capital, um, you know, access to banking services. Um, and I think just, it's just a great thing in general. All right. Sounds good. Well, again, thanks for coming on to the show. Uh, it was great. And uh, best of luck to you guys and, uh, and Leaf Trade. Yeah, thanks so much. It was great talking to you, Jason. <laughs> thanks a lot. Once again, I want to thank James Yee with Leaf Trade for coming on to the show. And for all your cannabis news and other podcasts like this one, come visit us at www.trichomes.com or you can reach out to the show at techandcannabis at trichomes.com. I'm Jason Kitamura and thanks for joining us today.